And Tim Ryan, if yeah. you just saw the soundbite, he enjoyed having a beer he last did. night with Lawrence O'Donnell on MSNBC, <laughs> a Miller Lite, by the way. It was an interesting interview for sure. Joining us now is Ohio Congressman Warren Davidson. Good morning, sir. Appreciate you joining us. So talk to us about what does your day look like today? Yeah, good morning. It looks uh, very good. I'm so encouraged. Uh, it was great to see the report out of Israel. And I think we're going to have a similarly great day today uh, for the House of Representatives. And I'm uh, optimistic about the Senate. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait until 2025 to um, clear the White House of the current uh, plans. I mean, they act like they're, you know, somehow, uh, you know, naive. Uh, but the reality is they're doing all this, inflicting all these bad policies on our country. Uh, there's a cause and people get that. They, they're going to send a clear message that we have to change course. Yeah, you uh, make so such I'm a good really point. I'm really excited we're going to have reinforcements. Um, right around 40 million people have already voted, uh, which is a record for a midterm cycle. Traditionally, up to 70 percent of that number typically leans to the left. That's what we've seen uh, over the last 25 years. Do you think that uh, Republican voters have sort of wised up to what happened in, in 2018 and certainly 2020 and have started early voting as well in, in greater numbers? Uh, that's not what we're seeing in our district. So uh, we've, we've got comparable numbers of early voters, uh, about 80,000 in Hamilton County, where Cincinnati is, for example. Uh, and that was similar to 2018. It is skewing even more heavily to Democrats now. I think Republicans are increasingly saying there should be an election day, not an election month. Uh, we should vote in person. Uh, but I have talked to a lot of people who are going in person to vote at the Board of Elections rather than choosing the uh, absentee system. Right. I know, sir, you've been very vocal on Twitter about energy and about the spending with the climate change. And I uh, wanted to get your thoughts on when President Biden said that he promised to shut down uh, coal plants all across America. Yeah, uh, you know, obviously a foolish idea. And it just shows, you know, we know uh, and the voters are going to show, hey, look, we know that you're lying. Uh, and, you know, they know that we know they're lying, but they're still lying. Uh, as uh, Solzhenitsyn said. And, huh. you know, with the energy policy, Joe Biden's tried to have it both ways. He's berating the energy companies, saying they should drill and explore. Uh, meanwhile, he's promising no drilling and promising an end to fossil fuels. Uh, these policies are horrible for America. They're great for China. Uh, and I got to tell you, I'm not hearing huge demand from the 8th District, uh, Southwest Ohio, to say, gosh, you've got to get us more electric vehicles. You've got to mm -hmm. find charging stations for us. They want the gas prices to be low again. They want groceries to be affordable again. And they know that the only way to do that is to change the people in power. So I'm excited. Yeah, coal production, by the way. Uh, coal is still responsible for 22% of the electricity uh, in this country right now. So to me, uh, for a candidate like, like J.D. Vance in Ohio and certainly Dr. Oz in Pennsylvania, one of the big coal-producing states, uh, that was a very late... Uh, or, or I guess you'd say a very early November surprise for both of their uh, campaigns for voters heading to the polls. Um, how do you think that race plays out, the Senate race in Ohio today? Yeah, very optimistic about J.D. Vance. One other thing people don't talk about with coal, you can't make steel without coal. You right. take the coke from the steel. Steel making is huge in Ohio and in western Pennsylvania uh, and vital for the United States uh, for national security. So this idea of we're going to have a war on coal isn't going to play out well. I think it's going to add even a little extra uh, to the momentum for Oz in Pennsylvania and J.D. Vance in Ohio. I think uh, J.D. Vance has got it. Uh, he's pulling away at a faster and faster clip. You know, Tim Ryan ran uh, a campaign that, you know, frankly, Democrats uh, would like to be able to run, uh, but he couldn't. You know, people called his bluff. At first, we didn't know from looking at the ads whether he was even in the House of Representatives, and certainly not that he was a Democrat who opposed Donald Trump. He campaigned as if he supported the policies uh, and he, he obviously didn't. And once um, J.D. was able to fund an informed ballot, people have said, no, I don't want anything to do with Tim Ryan. I want J.D. Vance. And I think that's going to show up today. Can I ask you a quick question? Is, is there a big Miller brewing? Uh, I think it's in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, right? Is there one in Ohio? Uh, the second largest one is in Trenton, Ohio, which is in southwest Ohio, um, okay. you know, my district. So, All right. uh, I, I, you know, I haven't pulled the workers there, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be voting for J.D. Vance. <laughs> Good. Well, I was just wondering because I was like, geez, you think you'd drink a beer that's like, you know, local beer, more identified yeah. with Ohio. But if there's a huge production plant there, then that I'll give him a pass on that one, <laughs> Congressman. Uh, good luck to you, Congressman Davidson. Great having you back on. Look forward to doing Thank it you. again soon. Thank you.